Welcome back, everyone, to more Zero K Exhibition matches. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're going to have Steel Blue and King's Dad on Living Lands. Steel Blue going for the Cloakbot Factory and King's Dad going for the Shieldbot Factory. Classic matchup, as it always is. And Steel, Steel Blue going for a very aggressive opening. King's Dad, on the other hand, just won that one defensive bandit before going into more of an economic approach. Now, both these players, they have not played much recently. They were fairly active in the past and seem to be coming back into it. I'm glad to see that. It's really nice to see people coming back into the community, and, or rather coming back into playing actively. So it'll be curious to see how this works. I imagine we're going to see a bit of a blast in the past as far as strategies go, but it's going to be, it's going to be different. So Steel Blue, like I said, starting out very aggressive with a lot of Glaives, not really going for a five Glaive Assault though. Only one on scouting, the rest of them a bit more defensive. Which is an interesting approach, and Steel Blue also trying to get that classic wall off that you do in Living Lands. On the other hand, Kingstead not going for that at all. Just building up power plants wherever is more convenient as far as... Actually, I'm not even sure where this is convenient for. Possibly for Overdrive. I guess you, you could make a wall along here. But I don't see Kingstead doing that. So Steel Blue at a bit of an advantage overall. They are fighting defensively against these bandits, which is not easy necessarily, because as I mentioned in the first game, retreating is always the advantage. Especially for units that have really fast attacks like the bandits. But it looks like the Glaives, not mentioned to get much value out of this. And that's the thing, unless the bandits get flanked completely, there's no easy way they're going to be stopped. However, Steel Blue with that wall will manage to stop that bandit from moving, and that is going to be a dead bandit at no cost, or the cost of one Glaive, for Kingstead. So, so, or sorry, for Steel Blue. So Kingstead losing one bandit, but gaining most of the map. And that's a big thing. Kingstead's going to be able to turn this into a very strong economy. They do have their power plants being built up. And they are building it in a rather efficient way, too, because they aren't accessing yet. They aren't even near accessing. So there's not really a major concern there. And at the same time, they're not going to be losing a whole lot of bandits to these glaives because, well, they... they... I mean, bandits have an advantage against glaives. The glaives can't really approach the bandits due to the fact that their speeds are about the same and the bandits have faster weapons. And, of course, retreating gives you an extra range bonus. So it's going to be a... It's going to be a bit of a win here for Kingstead. And this one looks like Kingstead just wants to get... Sorry... Steel Blue, however, just wants to get this all scouted out. Kingstead, I mean, they're pretty satisfied with what they have right now. They're probably going to expand more, obviously. They want to take that center. They want to take the northwest. But for the time being, they're in a reasonably strong position. However, we see Steel Blue going for the Reavers. I was talking about that's the first game. I wanted to see Reaver against Bandit because it's going to be a really good option to stop the Bandits from wreaking havoc. And there's the Reaver coming in here. So that is not a bad idea. And there it goes, ripping apart three bandits like it's nothing. So this one that provides a lot of value, and Steel Blue can use this as a platform to jump off on to get Kingstad's commander in a tight spot. It won't be able to kill Kingstad's commander, not with level 2 machine gun commander, not without support from the Glaives, but at the very least it was... Well, no, it, was, it wasn't nothing. That was actually a bit of a waste. Steel Blue unfortunately losing that Reaver, and that means that they can also lose this western side of the map at no cost to Kingstad, and that also means Kingstead's commander is in a very secure spot. Steel Blue, they aren't too far behind economically, but it's still a small thing. With Kingstead managing to kill off both these metal extractors without losing anything in the process, maybe losing the two bandits, maybe. Actually, yes, definitely. They're, they're, those bandits are dead. But still, at, again, more cost to Steel Blue, losing three lift to kill off the two bandits on top of the two metal extractors, which at least they have a conjure here to help rebuild quickly. On top of the, rec the 190, 200 reclaim they got. That's not great, though. That is not ideal, but it is, however, what they're going to use. But that being said, the Conjurer is coming in here. Kingstead actually surprisingly has been spotted. I mean, the radar is there. The bandits were known, but regardless, the Conjurer does go down. That slows down the rebuilding effort by about a minute or two. That is going to be huge. Steel Blue, five metal per second behind Kingstead. They will be rebuilding along the south side of the map, but they are not rebuilding along here, which means they're going to be four or five metal behind for most of the game, unless some harassment comes along in Kingstead. They might have to worry about that. Steel Blue is going for that exact harassment with these eight glaives. At the same time, a pair of Reavers in the middle of the map running into some problems with the Racketeer, but if they manage to get into a decent enough position against King's Dad's Commander, they could at least deal some damage, but unfortunately that Racketeer did completely jeopardize their chances of doing any meaningful damage. And King's Dad's Commander just pushing forward like nothing else. I mean, Steel Blue now using their Commander to help defend because at this point they haven't got much. I mean, really, their harassment force, these glaives coming along the side here, that's well. That's all well and good, but the thing is your opponent's army is bearing down, so while it's good to get rid of their economy as best as possible, 
An economic disadvantage is only going to matter once this army is dead. And it's hard to tell whether the army is actually going to die in the meantime. The Reavers are coming up. Steel Blue doing everything they can to build up their army as quickly as possible. Kingstead, on the other hand, hasn't worried so much about building caretakers. So there is that slight advantage for Steel Blue. They have more production, but only for now. Kingstead is getting that production up, and that is going to mean in about two minutes, if Steel Blue does manage to stop this assault, there is still going to be a large army again, despite the damage Steel Blue has done. So it's really the first of one armies. Although, that being said, Kingstead's commander is up front. If Kingstad's commander takes enough damage, does go down, then it's still possible that Kingstad could lose this, because that's the entire economic advantage that I was saying that Kingstad would have, the 5 metal per second. If they lose their commander, they lose that. That being said, the Glaives can't help much, but still. So a few Reavers, a few Dronin, that would still do the job. The problem, of course, the Reavers are getting disarmed all the time thanks to that Racketeer, but at the same time, the Glaives here, ooh, not quite being microed around as well as they could have been. They could have taken out all these metal extractors here and completely torn apart Kingstad's ability to build. Still, though, Kingstad forced to retreat somewhat. Not enough, I'd say, to really be useful, but en enough to at least give Steel Blue some breathing room. Steel Blue's commander, however, being hunted down by Kingstad. Kingstad, well aware that they are, or at least should be reasonably well aware that they are there. At the same time, Steel Blue, though, they do have a slight advantage. I mean, if you look at the actual army values, they have an advantage of about... What is it? About 200 metal. Okay, it's not a huge advantage, but in terms of unit types, it is still fairly big. And now being flanked by the Glaives, that band is not going to have much of a chance to work with, but I don't know why these Reavers are not moving forward. Steel Blue, you got Reavers! Might not be focusing on them. Might be focusing very hard on microing these troops up front and not so much on getting the Reavers in, but with five Reavers, Kingstad's commander is basically dead. They might be able to kill Steel Blue's commander in the process, though, and that is still a major problem. But whether that happens, it comes down to these Glaives, and these Glaives are going to be able to stop Kingstad's commander, killing it off completely! Yeah, yeah, no! Just barely not killing a Steel Blue's commander is going to go down, but the Reavers won't be able to save it. So both sides losing their commanders. Or no, not necessarily Kingstead. Kingstead's commander is still alive. Oh, one more Glaive. One more Glaive would have done that. Kingstead would have lost their commander, but at this point, Steel Blue at a bit of a disadvantage. The Reavers should have no problem tearing apart these bandits. But still, it's not the best of situations, especially with the Racketeer there, causing a lot of problems. And Kingstead's commander is still and they're vulnerable but it's not it's not over if king's head loses the commander steel blue has a chance otherwise steel blue is basically done but it looks like the reavers do manage to get in do manage to kill the commander and actually one of them does survive so not bad however with both commanders gone whoever builds storage first is gonna have a bit of an advantage but king's head overall economically has the advantage they did build up more they had more construction going on in the backyard and while some raiding is happening here in the front lines and nothing can really defend it, Kingstad still has the advantage. Like, army value, Kingstad's ahead by 300 metal. Metal used, Kingstad's ahead by about 1,000. And the attrition, Kingstad's ahead by 500. So I do think Steel Blue has a bit of an advantage when it comes to army composition for the time being. It's still going to be a question of how much Steel Blue can raid. Like, really use the Cloakybot Factory as the Cloakybot Factory, as the raiding sneaky factory. And it looks like not necessarily much. The front line is definitely not an option. And these glaives didn't go around the back yet. They are trying now, but the thing is, the forces of Kingstad are not distracted anymore. They were once, they are no longer, and this metal extractor will likely not go down. The convict will. Metal extractor actually also does, and that convict death is fairly big. A second convict is there as backup. So it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it is still something. And Still Blue is still pushing hard as best they can to take out Kingstad's forces, but the thing is, Still Blue doesn't have much in the way of power either. Losing their commander was huge for lack of power structure, and that means that they have to rebuild all these solar plants while building up their army, and that is slowing them down. Kingstad is basically doubling their economy just because of the amount of production they can put forward thanks to that power plant. Most of it is going to another power plant, so Kingstad investing in the future, that's giving Steel Blue a bit of an advantage, a bit of a chance, not an advantage, just a chance. The timing window they can work with, but at the time, at, for the time being, it's not really an option. Granted, Steel Blue now focusing very heavily on getting their power infrastructure back up, which is wise. Now they do have everything full up for power. They can build with all their metal. But even then, it's still a bit tricky. I mean, they want to get more power, obviously. They're low on power. It's still not necessarily enough to spend all the metal if they want to. Because, yes, they do have 17 metal income and 19 power, and they can push 20 build power in. So that's fine. But it's not necessarily enough. And especially when they have no army left, when this Reaver is being completely racketeered then it's over. 
So I can see why there is a bit of a downside using Reavers against Shield Boss. The Racketeers are a problem. But that's the thing is like, that I was talking about before. Is you get the Racketeers, like get the Glaze of support. Granted, with the Outlaw there, it's hard to even say how well that'll work. But this is where I'd say Ronin come in or Phantoms come in. Either of those units would be able to take out the, the Outlaws, take out the Thugs, take out the Racketeers. Actually, I think Phantom would be a really good idea in this situation. But Steel Blue not going for it, going for the Reaver instead. I mean, Reaver Glaive is not a bad combination. The problem is just the Outlaw. If the Outlaw can be torn to pieces, then there's a chance. If the Outlaw is still in play, though, the Glaives can't get around to the Racketeer and tear it apart to allow the Reavers to deal their damage. And that's where I see there being a bit of a problem. Of course, at this point, Kingstad just wrecking all of Steel Blue's economy, and Steel Blue has very little on hand to deal with that. So, nice tries coming in from Steel Blue to defend, but it looks like Steel Blue instead going for a counterattack. Not even going to bother saving the Southeast. Just leave that as long as possible, take out as much of Kingstad's economy as they can. It's a tricky option, though, since the army value is nearly double in favor of Kingstad. I mean, good positioning would be able to turn this around. Right now, Steel Blue does actually have really good positioning compared to their opponent. They can take out one of the Racketeers for free. A few of the Bandits are trying to advance into Glaze, and like I said, retreating is always the advantageous position, and these thugs have nothing stopping them, so all the support forces are going down. The reinforcements are not coming. And Steel Blue, with the Reclaim, at least should be able to maintain their economy for the time being, as they are rebuilding some of the stuff over the northwest side of the map. But the problem is that, again, there's still a the Racketeer against the Reaver, and there's still that Stardust there blocking most of the really juicy Metal Extractors on top of the Outlaw. I mean, Glaive's going for a suicide mission to take out the Outlaw, it's successful, but again, it's a suicide mission. And at this point, Steel Blue needs efficient trades in order to be able to get back in this game. And again, going for more Glaive Reaver play. Trying their best to wipe out this main army, but between the Outlaws and the Racketeers, I just don't see it happening. I mean, thankfully for Steel Blue, the Outlaw did manage to get that Glaive, but still, once it hits one of the Reavers, there's not a whole lot of room. With the Ronin up, there's an option, though. That's good, I like that. Steel Blue's got the Ronin, Steel Blue has the options to push forward and actually take out this army. But Kingstad, again, they have the economic advantage, they have the production advantage, they have a lot to work with that Steel Blue just plain doesn't. And it's really all dependent on how long it takes Steel Blue to reclaim everything. They've got their commander reclaim. I think both husks are here. There's still a lot of reclaim left, but the problem, of course, is that obviously Kingstad's not going to want to let that happen. Like, Steel Blue is only in this game because of these conjurers doing the reclaim. That's the biggest thing here. And if that goes, Steel Blue's out of the fight. So Kingstad obviously does not want to let that happen if possible. It's just a question of what can they do, because Steel Blue is still blocking reasonably well, but Kingstad's army is growing, and at this point it's already just about triple the size of Steel Blue's by value, or by cost. I mean, the Ronin doing a fine job pushing everything back, but again, they're not managing to easily get through the shields. They're doing some damage, getting rid of a handful of outlaws here and there. And now with the retreat, or now with the advance coming in, that does leave room for the Reavers to come in and actually start tearing apart the bandits, but the bandits are being smart enough to get away from there. So overall, Kingstad just has very little at stake compared to Steel Blue. Kingstad just needs to hold on. Steel Blue needs to find some way of forcing a fight in their favor, which is becoming decreasingly likely as they can't really outrange much. And when they try to, of course, the bandits come in here and just outspeed the Ronin. So I think with enough Ronin, it's possible, but I still would like to see some phantoms just to really hammer it home. Regardless of the bandits, getting out of positions very slightly, that is many if you die for free, and that's what I mean. Any slight position mistake coming out from Kingstead it means Steel Blue can get a good trade. Still, though, Steel Blue's behind in terms of attrition, about half of the way in terms of actual army value. But it's just, it's like slow attrition is still in favor of Kingstead. Steel Blue's very, very slowly managing to get a bit of value here and there from time to time. But it's the question of how much value can they actually maintain. With the Reavers going forward, not managing to get much value off of that. That is completely wrecking everything. Steel Blue has very little to work with. They do have a couple more middle extractors. And they do have the Reclaim coming in here. But there's nothing stopping King Staff from going over there. They realize there's not much that Steel Blue has to stop them. They have no Glaives. They have a bunch of Ronin. And nothing else. Steel Blue wisely pulling the Conjurers off of the ground onto the mountains to hide. But I'm sure King Staff is going to look. And even if they don't, that's still a lot of economy Steel Blue cannot rebuild and cannot take. And really, this Convict here, it's going for the Reclaim. It's going for the Calm Husk. Uh, wait, there it is. It's going for the Calm Husk. And that is where all the money is. So Steel Blue right now, going for the Phantom. 
And they do have a few Reavers left, so they could still potentially turn this around, especially with the Glaives going around the sides to deal with economic damage. So there's something there. But it's not much. Right, the Glaives are certainly trying, and they're being quite careful. I really like the way the Steel Blue is microing this around. I, I like the way the Steel Blue is approaching the fight in the back lines. But with Kingstad bearing down on the main production facilities and this Phantom nowhere near complete, it is basically over. Steel Blue has nothing left. I mean, the Phantom is done, but it can't even get a shot off before everything goes to hell. And that is going to be game. Steel Blue throws in the towel after a very hard-fought battle with a lot of very sneaky play. Good use of the Cloakabot factory there. But Kingstad just had that early advantage and managed to kill the commander early on. And that led to... That led to victory on the part of Kingstead. So, well done, Kingstead. And, looks like... Eh, I should probably do another game. People... People have showed up. Saying hi. Looks like it is time to have yet more game. So, I want to show off a game with someone... Okay, this... There's someone who's been playing a lot recently. A Tostic person. I'm curious... I want to see how they play. Assuming I can actually find them. And I can't. Okay, never mind. Well, at any rate. Let's see. I think we have something here. Because it looks like they're reasonably good. It's just a matter of finding a game where they seem to be evenly matched. But no, they're mostly playing against RAR, so I'm not sure how evenly matched that would be. Hmm. Okay, well, let's do a RAR versus a Tostic match. I want to see who this Tostic person is. Anyway, that'll be up in a sec. So, RAR and a Tostic on... What was it? Trojan Hills. Stay tuned. Be up in a couple seconds.